They've got real championship aspirations, folks, after acquiring Kevin Durant. So KD won't be able to play until after the All-Star break as he continues to recover from that MCL injury. But his new teammate, Chris Paul, knows not to take this roster and the opportunity for granted, telling ESPN, quote, it's different. It's taken some getting used to. I was telling uh, Book the other day, I played with a lot of great players. I got a chance to play with Blake. I got a chance to play with David West early in my career. I played with James, but probably never two guys of this caliber as far as Devin and KD. I know I'm not taking it for granted. I told Book not to either. Jay, uh, who's under the most pressure? So, Stephen, I think it's, it's easy to say a Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say a CP3, even though I don't see pressure on CP3 more so than I see an opportunity mm -hmm. for CP3 to enhance his legacy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a football analogy here. Cool. So Josh McDaniels, right, mm -hmm. just went through his first year with the Raiders. Right. Say somehow, some way, Aaron Rodgers is able to end up on the, on the Las Vegas Raiders. Okay. That would put a lot of pressure on Josh McDaniels. There'd be pressure on Aaron Rodgers, but a lot of pressure on Josh McDaniels to figure it out. It would put his job somewhat in jeopardy, considering there are already questions around his job this year. They chose to stay with him for another year, but also you bring Aaron Rodgers to the table, it's championship or bust every single year. Okay. Which is why I think from a basketball, I'm not saying external perspective, because everybody say, you know, CP3. Okay. Monty Williams. Right. Because now I need Monty Williams. You've been there before. Mm -hmm. You've been to a championship game. CP3 got injured. CP3 has a history of being injured. Devin Booker is still a top-tier player in this league, one of the best two-way guards, one of the best two guards in the NBA. You now add Kevin Durant, and now it's how do you make everybody work? How do you hold everybody accountable? How do you learn within 25 games how to push Kevin Durant, how to pull Kevin Durant back, how to make CP3 assert himself? And at the end of the day, for a team that's been there, that's been all in with Kevin Durant now, mm -hmm. I'm looking at Monty Williams as the guy by saying, okay, these may be external expectations mm -hmm. from other people mm -hmm. on what these stars need to do, but it's your job for being one of the best coaches in the game of mm -hmm. basketball mm -hmm. to make sure that it works because mm -hmm. you have about a two-year window with Kevin Durant and CP3 in which you need to win a championship. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> here's why I disagree with you, because of the timing. I think what you just explained is applicable next season. Full year under your belt. I think the fact that Kevin Durant arrives with about 28, or 24, 25 rather, 24, 25 games left, I think that that puts him in a position, don't get me wrong, you can't wet the bed and fall, go home in the first round. Don't get me wrong. But when you see the way Denver has flourished, when you see the way Boston is looking, Milwaukee is looking, potentially Philadelphia, et cetera, et cetera, if you end up not winning the chip this year, I think you can get away with it if you're Monty Williams. Here's why. Monty Williams has proven to be an exceptional coach, a coach of the year. They've improved every year under his stewardship. They pressed the hell out of everybody when they were in the bubble. They come back the next year. What do they win? They win 51 games. They win the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. They come back last year. They got the best record in basketball. Went to bed in a game seven, but it went to a game seven in the semifinal series, and that's what happened. And now this year, despite a plethora of injuries, particularly to Devin Booker, you're five games over 500. You're, you know, you're a top six seed in the Western Conference, and obviously you will elevate, you will escalate. So to me, it's not Monty Williams, who's proven to be a leader of men, not just a great coach, mm -hmm. but a leader of men because of the whole Sarver fiasco and some of the things that was going on and how he kept the team together, how so many things internally in his tenure in Phoenix have been handled under his stewardship. He's more than just a coach. He's a leader of men, and he's an inspiration to a whole bunch of brothers out there looking to get their shot because he is a guy like I view him the same way I view Mike Tomlin. From the standpoint, Mike Tomlin had been in Pittsburgh for 16 years, never had a losing record, okay? And the bottom line is, he's showing ownership. You, could, you should consider brothers for these positions. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. My answer to this question is CP3. And it's very simple as to why that is. Nothing about his legacy. He's one of the great point guards in NBA history. That's not what this is about. Knowing CP3 the way we do. Him personally. Him personally. He's going to put the most pressure he wants, on it. He I wants it bad. And here's where it is, too. Tomorrow ain't guaranteed, but especially for him. He always gets injured. That's just the reality of the situation. He's not getting any younger, okay? He still looks great when he's on the court. 
But the reality of the situation is the one thing that is not reliable about him is his availability. You don't know when something's going to happen to him. After what happened in Game 7, think about this. I got Kevin Durant now. I got Devin Booker with Kevin Durant now. And I got a seven-foot center that I've been schooling and tutoring for the last couple of years. And DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, I lost Mikel Bridges. That's an incredible loss. And props to him last night for dropping 45 mm-hmm. for Brooklyn. And by the way, Cam Thomas, keep your head keep your head on the swivel, my brother. You got 21 years old. You got a lot of promise. Don't be sulking on the bench because you ain't get the playing time that you wanted. Be mindful. GMs and other potential teams are looking at you, my brother. Just be mindful of that. But back to the Phoenix Suns, you see P3. This is the best chance you've had to win a championship. This is better than the chance you had two years ago against Milwaukee. This is better than that because you got Kevin Durant. You got Kevin Durant, Mm -hmm. who I believe, when healthy, is the best player on the planet. That's how I feel about Kevin Durant. With Booker and a a dude in eight and there's no scrub. Eight could give you 20 and 10. Eight might have got outplayed by Giannis, Mm -hmm. but it took Giannis to outplay him. He didn't get outplayed by anybody else in the postseason that year. I believe in DeAndre Ayton. The brother can play. I'm sorry. I got a seven-footer in the middle. I got a 6'11 dude that's the ultimate wing player, Mr. Midrange himself, with a three-point arsenal, can drop 30, 40, 50 in his sleep. And I got Booker. And all I got to do if I'm CP3 is run the show. No, you got to win this year. You got to win this year. Do you, is that you more, is if you're CP3, you got to win, win this year. I get that from an internal yeah. perspective for CP3 because okay, sure. we both know that's how okay. he's built all day sure, long. Sure, sure. But look, from the media's perspective, outside looking in, he, he, to me, is a game manager. He's an elite game manager. Okay. Right? Elite. Like, elite. Elite, 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 elite game manager. Elite. He's a point but guard. he's an elite game point manager guard. towards the latter part of his career, Steve. If we were talking about him in his late 20s, Fair. early 30s, I would say, oh, no, no, okay, because no. he's the guy. But to me, he's not like a Steph where Steph is a Tro- prolific totally scorer. Tro- Tro- Isaiah Tro- Thomas, Tro- prolific Tro- score. Right. Like LeBron, but I, but I got I to gotta, gotta interject to ask you something. Because I don't even want to. I want answer. Because I just remember something that you said. You may have forgotten you said this, Jay Williams. But I'm going to remind you. Wasn't you the person years ago that brought up some of the falters in the postseason by CP3? Oh, yeah. The Clippers? Yes. All right? Yeah, so yeah. what I'm saying is that you don't think that's going to come into question now that he got Kevin Durant and Devin Booker? I do, but I do also understand that the last couple of years he's been injured, and even this year no, 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 he's I'm, managing an injury. I'm not, well, right? well, he like, wasn't injured when he was on the court in that game seven last year. And I, Luke I, and them I, were up by 50. I hear you on that. You're right. I, I hear you. All right. But, so, I, so, but, I, but do you think CP3's impact on the game, the way we look at KD or Devin Booker, do you, I, do you still think it's his, as impactful? Yes. Here's what I'm saying. Elite game manager, fine. CP3, last comment. Yeah. CP3 is one of the great, great point guards this all game time has ever seen. seen. I agree with you. And one of the great Agreed. floor generals and leaders. Yes. You can't have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and you're CP3 and you have no chip to show for it. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. He has to win. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, he has are, to win. They're already winning. Suns have won 11 of their last No, no, no. I know okay. what you mean. <laughs> I was being facetious. Championship. Of course... You know, listen. What? Of course we know that's true. Mm -hmm. He's not lying. Y'all can put up his stats. They average six points, three rebounds, 40% shooting. Patrick Beverly isn't brought to any NBA team for scoring. Mm -hmm. He's brought there to defend and infuse an attitude of toughness, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. That's his job description. Anything else he gives you is butter. In the end, anybody going to the Los Angeles Lakers, as is the case with the New York Knicks, I might add, who I'm very, very proud of, by the way. Oh, wait, wait, Playing wait, well. I'm very wait. proud. Are you back on the bench? Pause it. There? Pause it. Are we back? Pause it. Russ Fisher brought this for me. Okay. So this is a throwback. You're See not that? a Knicks fan. Just let me do my thing. Really, Russ? Russ, Russ, Russ TV? come out here. You can come out here, Russ. Okay. So on this is TV? the number 33. Come on out, Russ. Russ doesn't have a mic, but he just wanted to remind America that you lost a bet. You said the Knicks would not win 33. What is Don't the Knicks record? Don't you jump on board this. They just won 33 games last night against Atlanta. Yes. I owe them a pair of Jordans. Yes. You're welcome. You got your moment? You happy now? You happy? That's Both right. of you? We you sh- happy? We should have got him. Uh, I'm glad you got the culture listen, right with Jalen Brunson. I, I, I have you got not, the culture. I have been utterly disgusted with Nick management in terms of how they deal with media and stuff like that. 
But Jalen Brunson was clearly the right pickup. He is an all-star. I don't care what anybody says. He should be on the all-star team. I agree with team. you on that. There's no doubt about it. He has been right. something special. I know you want to get to Pat Bev, but I just had to work that in. Yes. Thank you. And oh, by Thank the you way, for working that and in, by Molly. the way, it's by too the bad way, I'm not a Knicks fan. By the way, what, what, what hurts me is what the Knicks could be if they had gotten Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. But they wanted to Ooh. hold on to R.J. Barrett. Him and Don't get me started. Like, do you, Don't get really? me started. So Molly, I'm not giving them. I'm not giving them a free pass. But back, back to Pat Bev. He's not lying. He's telling the truth. The fact of the matter is that there's always other stuff that comes with being the Lakers, being a Laker. Yeah. Just like there's other stuff that comes with being a Nick. In the media capital of the world, in Tinseltown, there are distractions. I'm not talking about... <laughs> I'm just saying, it's the big city. I didn't there's a lot that's going on. You turn around, you turn your face, you turn your face. Your face still says a lot. face. I mean, your face said a lot. You know, the point is... The point is... The point is... Can I live? There's a lot. One day. The point is, there's a lot that happens. Bev, Pat Bev ain't lying. It takes a special kind of somebody to maintain focus with, within the Lakers organization because there's a lot of distractions that come with being a Laker, and you got to be up for it, and not everybody is. Not only that, Stephen A., it's the Lakers and what everything comes along with the Lakers along with one of the greatest players the game of basketball who's ever seen who's built a multi-billion dollar business around media in general with a lot of different topics. I'll just give you a personal thing watching it. Anthony Davis became a really big story about, was he going to get traded? Yeah. You know, is he mad at LeBron because he didn't get up and clap? Think about that moment for a second, right? As much as everybody wants to praise LeBron, he deserves all the praise. If you're on that team and you're losing to Oklahoma City and afterwards in the locker room, you see Bron there with his mm -hmm. son and they're talking about everything. He deserves to be praised once again. But you're 13th in the West and people are crucifying, crucifying you and criticizing you outside. That's a really weird place to be in. Yeah. Why you got Russell Westbrook who doesn't know whether he's going to be on the team or not. You tell me how you manage that internally. That's it's, true. It's a tough pill to swallow. That's, it ain't true. Easy. That's true. But uh, and listen, they should have been disgusted. I'm very ashamed of the Lakers losing on the night that LeBron or one, uh, you know, eclipse Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the all-time scoring record. You lost to the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, City Thunder. Thunder. Come on, man. I mean, Shea Gilgis Alexander's a bad brother. I mean, he's a worthy old star. come on. I get all that. You can't lose that Thank game. you. That just showed me what something was missing from the Thank character you. of the team to lose on that particular night. I mean, unless a team won when Kobe dropped 60 yeah. on his final game as a Laker. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.